everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, and uh, today I'm going to continue on my, it's the last week of my Tyranuary painting challenge. Of course, next week, next month, I think it's high February. So we're going to keep going, keep painting some Tyranids. I'm going to keep doing Tyranids for at least another month, maybe two, because I'm having a great time painting Tyranids, and it's been nice to just get um, these guys finally painted. I've had a lot of these models for a long time, and it's nice to finally have them nice and painted and ready for the tabletop and some battle reports. You know, Tyranids are not an army that has gotten a lot of love from GW lately, so I should give them some love as well. Well, they've gotten some new drop pods and stuff. It's good stuff. But uh, yeah, so let's keep on. So grab a brush, grab some paints, grab a model, and hopefully get some work done too. So thank you very much, and let's start painting. So hey everyone, welcome back. It's uh, time to paint up. I'm going to keep painting this Hive Tyrant today. This is what I'm going to be working on today, my Hive Tyrant with wings. Because, uh, yeah, you need some love. Oh, you need to get them on the tabletop. This has been a, a successful month overall. Let's talk about January. January, first month of the year, which is awesome. This year, my goal is to get as many models as I can have painted by the end of the year. I'm going to be happy. Like, I'm going to keep doing these painting challenges every month. Some months will be better than others, because like next month, for example, February is going to be a bit of a, of a challenge, because it's going to be pretty hard. Um, I'm going to be gone for a bit of it. It's a short month to begin with, so we'll see. Um, but I'm going to keep going. And no matter what, no excuses, you know, I'm going to keep painting and get as much done as I can. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's what I say. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, let's look at what I've done this month. So, painting-wise, for Tyranids alone, I've painted a Swarm Lord, um, a what else? So Swarm Lord, uh, the, uh, once I get this flyer done, Flyrant. Two Tyrant Guard, a Death Leaper, and an Exocrine. So that alone is, that's a lot of points. I don't know how many points that is. But let's just, I don't know actually how many points it is. It's probably a good amount of points for this month, right? That's just Tyranids. But um, for the Warp, I've painted up a bunch of stuff this month. Like for the Warp, my painting challenge, my, my, just my tutorials alone... Um, I've painted to that Castigator, right? The Imperial Land Castigator, which that alone is like 400 points. Uh, two, I, I did only did one for a tutorial, but of course I painted the second one at the same time, were those uh, Dread Knights, which I've been now using in battle reports. As you can see, one went up yesterday. Of the Dread Knights in action. No spoilers, but, uh, oh, they're good. You know, um... Yeah, they're pretty good. Of course, Grey Knights in general don't have a lot of uh, options these days. They're not a huge flushed out army anymore, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so two Dread Knights, a Castigator, uh, and this week's tutorial is, I'll stop for just a second, this week's tutorial, look at him, Cypher, looking all cool and betray -y. So he's this week's tutorial in the warp. He went up yesterday, the tutorial for him. So if you want to see that, go check out the warp. Um, so in a cipher. So that alone, I've painted, you know, well, almost 2,000 points of 40K this month. Uh, probably, maybe even more. I don't know. I'll have to do the math sometime. But uh, the Swarm Lord is 280 points. Uh, the Tyrant Guard alone, I think that brings up to like 360. This guy's probably around 200. Fully kitted out. Maybe even more. So, yeah, probably about 2,000 points in January. That's been a pretty successful month in January, I'd say. That's, you know, very rarely do I get 2,000 points painted in a month. So, as far as January's gone, I think January's been a successful month. What else has been happening? I've been putting out videos. That is obviously the key. Of, to my happiness is the amount of videos I'm putting out because I'm just kicking butt in my mind. You know, I don't want to toot my horn, but I'm, I'm happy that I've been able to maintain the amount of videos that I have. You know, I was able to put out a couple, I think, uh, two, two or three, how to play 40Ks, several battle reports. A new, a new how to play 40Ks going up today. 
It is um, the movement phase. Movement phase, but I'm going to do a specific... I think I might do a specific video. Uh, the more I think about it, I'm going to do a video dedicated to transports or vehicles in general. I think vehicles in general should get their own video. But I will, like, there. it is mentioned, you know, how fast they can go in, um, or I have a couple examples of vehicles in my, in my How to Play 40K series, uh, in my episode from yesterday, and, yeah, so it'll be good. Um. But vehicles in themselves are confusing. People tend to be... I think they're the most confusing thing in the game are vehicles because, you know, they, they're one of the few things that you move a certain amount, you can shoot a certain amount of guns. And it changes depending on how much you move. And, and uh, yeah, there's, you know, it's just confusion. So I think that should get its own vi uh, video. By the way, people... I, there was a comment last week. I asked... Obviously, I read all your comments. I read all the comments. I can't respond to all of them, obviously. Because I get a lot of comments now. But um, one of the comments asked me why am I wearing a glove. So if that person is listening to this, the reason why I'm wearing a glove is because before I do this, I typically do some airbrushing. And as you, as you, as you guessed, you know, I just did some stuff that required a glove and I just haven't taken off my glove. You know, I did some airbrushing on this guy and a couple other things beforehand and that's why I have my glove on. I just haven't taken it off because I'm still painting. And I, I did the same thing last week. I don't put on gloves just hand paint models, but if I already have a glove on, I will keep it on. So that answers that question. Also, last week I asked you viewers, um, should I just randomly give away a prize? Not randomly, should I give a prize like for a, a number, like 40,000? And most of the comments were really good. I really liked the comments. Um, the advice was sound. You know, most of you felt that it would obviously entice people, but it's just a short term, you know, grab on subscribers and obviously many people would unsubscribe afterwards you know unless I keep doing this uh, I did like the idea that a couple people put forth saying maybe I should just randomly give away prizes on random numbers or dates just to say thank you because that would entice people to stay longer um, but obviously I, I want people to stay for my view my videos you know I want people to come for the J and stay for the J because I'm, I put out a lot of content I'm obviously not the most content per month of all the YouTube channels in our niche, but I'm actually one of them. Um, I'm probably in the top three or four in our niche about amount of videos put out a month because Mini Wargaming obviously puts out a lot, as does Blue Table. So I don't keep up with them because Blue Table, they just, you know, a lot of it's just painted commissions, so they can just highlight what they've done. Um, so it's pretty easy. And the Mini Wargaming as well puts out a lot of content, but uh, I do put out a lot of content as well. You know, 20 videos a month, it's significant, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to still think about it. And my favorite comment from last week is, um, it wasn't the most insightful, but I just it was, you know, it was just a really awesome comment. It was, um, it's a Bane Blade. I love that comment. It made me laugh. I'm like, yeah, that's true. It is a Bane Blade. And people will just be like, I want a Bane Blade. You know, Bane Blades are one of those vehicles that a lot of people want, but they're expensive. So now, you know, in a painted Bane Blade, if I paint it up nicely, um, which I'm thinking about that. If I did that, I decided that I'm probably going to make a free tutorial about it. So if I decide to do the giveaway, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to paint the Bane Blade for free. Or it'll, I might be part of my Airbrush 101 series, but it's a different series. It's in the world. But uh, I think I'm going to do it for free. And then, you know, like a, about a month ahead of time, then I'll be like, hey, you know, someone's going to get it soon. So that might be cool. But I hope that people like it because I don't really have a use for it. You know, I don't play Apocalypse. I don't believe it can be used in Escalation. I think it has to be Apocalypse. Maybe it's Escalation. But uh, I don't really... I don't have much of a use for it. I don't. And I would love to paint it up nicely and give it away to a subscriber. Because 
That way, somebody else who wants a Bane Blade can have a Bane Blade. Or, maybe, if the winner doesn't want it, I'll do something else, like, I don't know, another model or something. But we'll see. It would kind of be funny if I gave it to someone and they're like, I'm a Nids player. I don't have any room for a Bane Blade. I'm like, oh. You know. But it'd be cool. Just as a way of saying thank you. So there he goes. He's looking pretty good. He's not going to be my highest quality, unfortunately. I kind of I made some mistakes when I was painting him up, but he looks pretty good. I'm just going to clean up his uh, carapace now and uh, do the reds. And he's going to be pretty much done and ready for the tabletop. He's tabletop ready. That's what I want to go for. And I'm happy with him. February. It's going to be a good month. It's going to be a good month. You know, um, I'm going to the Vegas Open for a little bit. That'll be fun. You know, another convention. It's my third convention ever. My first one was uh, was Adepticon last year. Second one was Gen Con last year. And so Gen Con, Adepticon, and now the Vegas Open. Uh, I, already, I just bought my ticket last week for Gen Con, like my badge for next, this year's Gen Con. And I bought my, I got my hotel room, which was kind of an ordeal too. I'll talk about that in a sec, but that was pretty, not for me, but for a lot of people apparently had problems with the Gen Con um, system this year. I didn't have any problems. I actually had a pretty easy time, but yeah, uh, what else? So then there's the Las Vegas Open. And he, it's gonna be fun too. I still gotta buy my ticket, but I'm pretty. I'm just buying a convention ticket. I'm not actually gonna do any events because I unfortunately just can't bring the models with me. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna meet people. You know, have a good time. Chill with the WGC people. They're really awesome people. No pun intended if Les is there, but because uh, he's an awesome paint job. But uh, they're good. They're really good people, and I like to go hang out with them. I'm gonna probably try to upsell things for Austin. I like to just take over his booth and just sell stuff. It's fun. You know. I'm gonna probably bring I'm definitely gonna bring my video camera and document it and have a good time. You know, it's gonna be good. It's not really my it's not like it's I'm gonna be there and filming and battle reporting and anything, just because I said I can't bring a whole army with me for the uh, the event. I just can't do it. But it's okay. So people are going to Adepticon. Oh, by the way, it, it was asked a lot in my Q and J uh, this week. Am I going to Adepticon? Of course. It was by a viewer that I actually, I met last year. He's a younger viewer and he was in the Young Guns contest for, uh, the War it was a tournament. And I remember talking to him because he was playing against Space Marines and he had Chaos. And he had a cool Heldrick. And I was telling him, like, oh, Heldrick, it'll be fun. So, yeah, he was a cool kid, and I'm hopefully going to meet him up again this year. Uh, the WGC people, I'm going to meet up with, uh, I think, it's, I'm pretty sure Miranda's going. It's a Wargamer girl. Uh, Owen's definitely going, because I'm pretty sure I'm driving him. Um, but he's not a member of the WGC, but he's a, he's a good guy. Um, who else is going to be going? Obviously the WGC in general. It'll be fun. And yeah, I just, I love these conventions because I get to buy stuff, meet people, and it's it's cool because I'm not, I don't get to really hang out purely with Wargamers very often. And it's just, it's really fun to just go and meet people. And it, it also gets to, you get to meet people that you don't normally get to meet because I'm from Canada. And, you know, um, m the majority of my viewers are not from Canada. So it's always cool to just get, meet them and, and get feedback and, and you know, see what they like, talk to them, you know, it's, it's, I'm just a normal guy. I put on pants. <laughs> I love to say that. That's one of my favorite lines to say. I'm just a normal guy. I put on pants. And people are like, what? 
I, I kind of got that idea of those lines from, uh, there's an old movie, well, it's a movie, an old Steve Carell movie, not old, but it's a couple years old, uh, Dinner for, Dinner with Schmuck, Dinner for Schmucks, and he just repeatedly says things like that the whole movie, he's like, you know what they say, some may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not. So, but, uh, I'm excited, I'm, it's gonna be really fun, and, uh, to finish all these Tyranids, I'm excited for, to do that. And people, because you are my, uh, you're, you're my confidants now. You have become my confidants. You know, I ask your your input on things, and you get information on things beforehand. Because I've decided that it's a benefit of, of painting along with me. You're my painting buddies. So um, you want to see another model that I recently have uh, have painted up, not painted up, sorry, uh, built. Here, I'll show you in just a moment. But uh, there's a model I'm, not, I'm really excited for. The tutorial will be in the warp, but still, he is going to be in battle report soon. And that makes me happy. Because... I think you'll figure out what I'm kind of an army that I'm kind of working on right now. This year, I'm going to try to add two new armies, but I wanted to get my the, the my studio armies that I already have. I want to get them flushed out, and all these models that I have in, in my workshop painted, because um, yeah, because then that way they're done, and then I can turn my attention to a full throttle on a new exciting army that. You know, people want me to play. Dark Eldar is one of the ones that people throw out the most. And I maybe one day will have one. In fact, they I could very much likely have one by the end of the year. Start a Dark Eldar army. Because I already have... Um, I like to keep my number balanced between Xenos and non-Xenos. And I recently acquired an Eldar army. It's not mine. I'm just playing with it right now. If, I, if people want, I can play with it. Um... But uh, I have an Eldar army in my studio now, and I have Necrons now, and they're, of course, new Codex t uh, tomorrow. And hopefully my Codex will arrive in time. I've decided to go non-digital this year, this Codex, because I really want a hard copy. Because then if I bring it to, Gen like, if I want to take my Necrons to Gen Con, I think I'm taking my Grey Knights, though, but i, I got to get a hard copy for my Grey Knights. Um, I really like hard copies of the Codices. So, what was I saying? Yeah. So, I want a hard copy. So, I hope it hopefully it comes, and then my Codex review will be tomorrow. Um, and I'm hoping Necrons get love. The r early rumors aren't bad. They seem to be very much in line with the standard what's been happening in 7th edition. Um, you know, Lord of War, new formation, uh, new detachment, rules that they could take and yeah apparently there's a like you get to reroll ones or something I think that's the the benefit of taking the detachment is you get to reroll ones when doing reanimation protocols which is pretty powerful because that'll you know that'll, that'll bring up like a sixth more guys so that's not a sixth more guys than percentage wise, so it's not bad. That's not bad at all. It's a good warp. That's a good bonus. And uh, so that's not bad. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I hope the Necrons get some love. Or sorry, so I have Necrons for Xenos. I have Eldar. I have um, Necrons. I have Orcs, and I have Tyranids. And for Imperial, I have Grey Knights, Dark Angels, and just, I already mentioned this many times, I actually have a couple, I have about a th uh, 1,500 points worth of Space Marines of various types in my workshop. So I'm going to be painting up them in the near future. And they'll be, I'm, I'm really certain, I think I'm going Imperial Fists, but I'm, I'm really debating whether or not I want to go like old school Imperial Fists. Like the new, I love the new Forge World kits for the Imperial Fists, all the conversion kits. Oh, they're awesome. 
So maybe that. But uh, this isn't what I wanted to show you. But uh, I recently did this for my Rush 101 series, my Warp and the Warp. So look at that. First sign. I need to get a new door for it. But there's an Imperial Knight Land Raider in, tr in, in the beginning stages. Imperial Fists, sorry, not Imperial Knights. Imperial Fists. But here is a sneak preview at my next army that I will also be building. Now this army isn't going to have a lot of models. But uh, they're going to be known as the Jainites. Ooh. Zoom out a little. Here we go. Oh, so that's the preview. You all know who this guy is. I'm not going to mention it. But there's the preview. So, Castigator, done. Him, next. Mm -hmm. And he is awesome. That's what I say. So now you know. You're my confidants. That's my next big model that I'll have painted up soon for battle reports. And he is going to be fun. Because... He has strength D weapons. Close combat. Only in close combat. But his shooting attacks are pretty strong too. I think it's strength, strength 7 AP 2. Strength 7 AP 2. Assault 6 or something. Heavy 6. So. He's going to be pretty fun. I don't know. Castigator is awesome too. But uh. Yeah, so I want to have an army of them. That alone, like the Castigator plus that guy, is like half an army already. I only have four models in this army. Because I usually film at 1500 points, but I might have to change to 1600, because 1600 is basically. Um, needs to be a little thinner. 1,600 is basically four guys, and that's 1,600 points, so. Maybe only three of them. Three of them and an ally. Like, three of them and Cypher. That'd be a hilarious list. First Blood is a fourth of my army. It wouldn't be the most competitive army. Well, it could be. If your opponent doesn't have anything to answer them, you know, if you're up against orcs and they don't have a lot of buried uh, claws or ludas, even ludas, you know, fives to hit, sixes to glance, and most of them have four up invulnerable saves. It's a lot of shots to take down a knight. You need uh, 10 glances, which is 60 hits, which is 180 shots from Ludas on average. So if you have three squads of 15 Ludas and you rolled threes, that wouldn't even do it mathematically. So, to kill one. And you only have basically one turn until they get close combat with you. Because they can move 12 inches. So turn one, they move up 12 inches and demolish the table. And then turn two, they're basically in assault range of you. If they weren't already. Or turn one, you move up. And then they get you. But we'll see. But if your army has the answer to them, it there could be they're not going to be very competitive at all. They're very rock, paper, scissors, I found. Because if um, your opponent's like, oh, I'm bringing Melta spam, you know, good game. Because you will only survive so many Melta hits. They do have rules that they don't blow up in the first Melta hit. They, if you pen them and you roll a six, uh, you get D3 instead of one, hull point off. 
And until then, they are basically full strength. The things about these Titans, these Imperial Knights, is that they are healthy until you take off the last hull point, and then they blow up, and they kill whatever is around them, because they you place a very very large blast template on top of them, and it scatters, and then if the big the inner circle, the very most inner circle gets hit with strength D. So you just lose chunks. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the battle report yet, but if you go check out my battle report that I played with the Blood Angels, you'll see an exploding Imperial Knight. It's pretty deadly. Pretty deadly. Mm -hmm. So, but it's cool. So, it'd be, it'd be an interesting army. And I don't know what the fans will think about it, so we'll see. interesting it'll make for quick battle reports when my movement phase is only four models and my shooting phase is only four guns um, and then I just jump into close combat where these things just destroy everything they touch buried fists and claws are the only really way to deal with them melt -a bombs as well I guess but there's not a whole lot to deal with them uh, in close combat. Power fists are okay, but they're front armor 13. So you're, you know, they go at initiative 1, and the knights go at initiative usually 4 or 5. So they go first, and then they will kill. Like, they're, they're strength D weapons, so they'll kill everything that is in close combat with them. Usually way well before they go, you know, the only hope is a buried fist or a buried claw repeatedly going. I guess a squad of orcs could do it, I guess. I don't think the knights are characters. I have to double check. I don't remember if they're characters. So if they're not characters, then it's easy. Because otherwise, but if it's not, the knight would just challenge. And then the fist either doesn't attack or gets squished first. That'd be fun. And I'll call them the J-Knights. They'll be the J-Knights again. The official J-Knights. When I first came and started doing battle reports, I believe the Grey Knights, I referred to them as the J-Knights, but people hated it. Called Grey Knights. So, fine. You know. uh. Man, these days fly by. They fly by. I feel like every week... When I sit down to paint, it's just like, wow, another week's gone by. Wow, what did I get accomplished? Wow, what have I done, you know? Because it's just crazy how fast the week and the years go. You know, this month is going to be over on Sunday, is uh, February 1st, and it's also the Super Bowl, which I will probably watch. I like to watch the Super Bowl. I'm not the biggest football fan. Um... And, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I'm probably going to cheer for the, I know people hate them because they're apparently cheaters, but I will cheer for um, New England. It would be actually really cool to see, well, the problem is either New England's going to win, right, because they won a lot, or it'd be a repeat, because I'm pretty sure uh, the, the other team in the Super Bowl won last year. So, that'd be kind of cool. Repeat champions. Because the statistics of football, football has a really fun, quick turnaround rate. Very rarely does the team win a Super Bowl and even make the playoffs the next year. And if it does make the playoffs, this is the first year in 10 years that a team's won a playoff game the year after they won the Super Bowl. So, the Seahawks, maybe will they be able to do it? Maybe not. We'll see. It'll be a good game. Hopefully, unlike last year with the Denver, Denver Broncos. 
Uh, the Denver Broncos. I loved making that joke last year. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Yeah, it's going to be fun. You know, uh, last weekend was the... This is a fun time of year because it's all it's when a lot of the All-Star games happen and the, uh, like, the Pro Bowl, the Super Bowl... And the NHL All-Star Game all happened in successive weeks. So, um, the All-Star, the, uh, the NHL All-Star Game was hilarious this year. It was, uh, like 17, the final score was 17 to 12, I'm pretty sure. It was just hilarious. Like, I've never seen that much scoring in a game. Uh, yeah, it was just, it was wacky. So if you're a sports fan, this is a good time of year. And then, of course, the Super Bowl, the mother of all, one, time, one big game. What else? Uh, I love the new look, in case you're wondering, I love the new look of the new Dreadnoughts from, uh, what are called? Contemptor Dreadnoughts? Or the, the new guys, the new Dreadnoughts that Forge will just release. They look really cool. I like them. Of course, for the next Forge World thing I buy is going to be more Grot Tanks. Just more Grot Tanks. Until I have my Grot Tank army. Imperial Grot. That'll be my... After that, I'm just going to play Grot Tanks. Grot tanks, killer cans, because grot tanks are fast to stack. I'm gonna do a grot tank, killer can, with two min squads of grots. List. And just have a hilarious fun time. Again, may not be the most competitive, maybe competitive. I don't know. The thing is, I don't put lists together. When I put lists together, I don't try to. I don't list Taylor. I don't like it personally, but if people do it, you know, not, I have respect. If you want to do it, go for it. Um. I don't list Taylor, and I just build lists that I think are fun or, you know, might be good, but I don't think of the broken combinations all the time. And you can kind of tell that based on the armies I play. You know, I play Kenwall Orcs, and I play Tyranids are my, you know, my two, the two armies I play the most. Grey Knights, people, you know, 5th edition Grey Knights were... I guess known as kind of the cheesy army, but that kind of got fixed in sixth. And then seventh, you know, Grey Knights are, they're still quasi competitive, I would say. But uh, they're really, that was a mistake, they're really uh, limited on their options. So if you know, if, if, if you see a Grey Knight player, you can probably anticipate what they're going to bring, seeing as there's not that much criteria, you know, you know options. You could see a whole pure Grey Knight list. Uh, by Grey Knights, I mean actually the Grey Knights themselves, the Strike Squads. But I don't see that as being very common in competitive play. Uh, I think the terms are better. Oh, maybe they are. And as far as heavy support choice, you'll probably see uh, Dread Knights. Because they're they're sweet. I like the Dread Knights. I really do. They're. Um, I've only been using them for two weeks now. And I just, people always think I have a problem with them. I just never use them in battle reports. But uh, they, they're sweet. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. Um, and then probably a Storm Raven or something. You know, the days of the Siphoman Dreads are kind of dead because Siphoman Deads are gone. You know, and, and Strength Seven's okay. But Strength Eight was just so much better. Because then you can actually destroy vehicles. You know, Vindicators would be null. Because you can take them down. Um, Strength 8 was just so much better. So I don't see a lot of Siphonman Dread lists anymore. But uh, I have a couple. So maybe I'll put a list together one day. Drago to me is the best thing in the codex. 
Drago is amazing. Because he's an independent character, so you can bury him in a squad, like I do. You give him a Death Star. And you just make sure that the scariest gun faces Drago. And then, what I've been loving lately is, if you ever get the Sanctuary, the, uh, or Sanctuary Psychic Power, Sanctuary Psychic Power gives the Psyker and his squad a plus one to their invulnerable saves. And since uh, Drago's attached to the squad, Drago has a two plus invulnerable save. Storm Shield plus one. So you stick him in the front of the squad facing all the Meltas and all the Plasmas and all that stuff, and your opponent will simply, a lot of the time, just not want to shoot at them because it becomes a complete waste of firing. Uh, Drago, has in, Drago has Eternal Warrior, so he's not going to be instant killed by anything. He, um, and he has a two-up invulnerable save. So you can fire all those weapons, all that Meltas and the Plasmas you want at those Paladins. I love combining with Paladins and the Librarian, because then, again, it's just it's a great deterrent, because your opponent will have to think about it, really. Like, do I want to waste my strongest gun to maybe... You know, one in six chance of getting a wound on Drago. And he has four wounds, and one instant kill him. So, yeah. he He's amazing. I really love Drago. Plus, I've always just liked Drago. He's just been my favorite HQ. He's actually probably one of my favorite HQs in the game. But now he's a Lord of War. And he's one of those Lord of Wars that he actually earned, to me... He is a Lord of War that belongs in the Lord of War chart. Like, he is a beast unto himself, and opponents should fear him. You know, he is a beast. But, like, other Lord of Wars, like Goskal Thraka, again, I understand why the legend, you know, he's the legendary orc. He is the big bad boy on the block. But as far as rules go for Goskal Thraka, he is not worthy of being put in the same category as a Stampa or a or even Drago, I, in my opinion. I don't feel that Gospel Thraka is worth bringing in most lists. A, he's slow, really, really slow. B, he doesn't have an invulnerable save anymore because they took away cyborg bodies, so he now has a six up, feel no pain. He does have Eternal Warrior, which is nice, and a strength 10 power claw, but so does Warboss. Warbosses don't have Eternal Warrior. But they're much cheaper. And, uh, obviously, uh, well, you don't take, you can take both of them. You can take a war boss and Gospel Thraka now, because he's a Lord of War. But, uh, I just don't feel that, you know, like, Gospel Thraka is so easy to deal with. For and I, understand, I completely understand why they moved him to Lord of War, because of the, you know, he's a legendary fighter. He's Gospel Thraka. But, uh, he just doesn't seem to. For his points cost, I don't see him as one of the be-all, end-all. A war boss on a bike, to me, is a much better option any day of the week for much cheaper. You know? I, yeah. If he had Eternal Warrior and an invulnerable save, a decent invulnerable obviously he can call the Wah, and he gets his two-up invulnerable save. The turn he calls the Wah, which is great. Um, but, on his, yeah, I don't know. I just don't... He's not my, my go-to, you know, orc. He really isn't. He's coming along. Swarm Lord is basically done. Look at this. I got all the reds done. Wings. He's looking pretty good. I think he's... I, I'm happy with this right now. I think he's pretty much ready for tabletop. Yeah. Alright, I'm still waiting for my order. I put in an order for some sand that I use. Uh, on the larger bases, I use a larger grit sand and then fill it in with smaller grits because uh, that way it looks just looks better. I don't like a, just a large base full of small sand. And it hasn't come yet. So, I guess it's just... Oops, sorry, I hit the camera. But So no basing for him, short term. But he's basically done. Look at him. So he's cool. He has the Twin Devourer kit from Forge World. So he has, you know, two sets of twinling devourers, and he's gonna fly around the battlefield, hopefully surviving and killing things. So good stuff there. Good stuff there.
Cool. So what should I work on? I still have probably 10 more minutes to film. So once again, he's cool. Let's paint some uh, gaunts. I still have this giant box, like giant uh, blob of gaunts on my table. So let's go ahead and paint some of them. Get some uh, base colors on them and uh, start getting them. Yeah. I should really, uh, but my, my eventual goal is to have every model, you know, in this uh, workshop painted. So these gaunts will eventually be painted for sure. And uh, they're going to look awesome. But I just, I've been focusing more on the big guys that I don't normally have in my army this month. Like, uh, I, I don't have, I never had an exocrine, you know, and I will, I have another flyer. So a double flyer on this would be kind of fun. And that'll be fun, but uh, I don't have an Exocrine or a Death Leap or a Swarm Lord. I didn't have any Tyrant Guard. So it's all, you know, new models that I really want to, uh, to try in Battle Reports. I do have Gaunts, and I've used a Horde of Gaunts more times than I can count in, in Battle Reports. Uh, not much in 7th Edition. Not since they nerfed the whole uh, Turbagon spam. Because Turbagons were awesome before they updated them. You give your Turbagon um, toxin sacs and adrenal glands, and then all of a sudden you have these super gaunts that pop out and assault uh, the turn that they are created, and they are you know strength four usually, so they you know and they wound on fours everything, so they can even kill like they could. I've had I've had actually played games where a gaunt will um, will kill like a wraith. Knight. I've killed a wraith knight with gaunts before. It was a squad of fifteen gaunts, termagants. They uh, just a second, let's zoom in a little bit more. They assaulted. It was, this happened just after the new codex came out for Eldar in fifth or in sixth edition. Sorry, and. With, you know, I've had that before. No, was it a Wraith Knight? Sorry, it wasn't a Wraith Knight. It was a Dread Knight. Gaunts killing Dread Knights. I've had Gaunts take wounds off Wraith Knights. And do a good job doing that too. And, uh... I know, I paint really sloppily. I will agree. People have commented on that. But with these Gaunts, my, my process kind of fix it, fixes it. Is I get the color on the on the body and then I clean up the carapace and they look good. Or you know, my tabletop standard. So um, but yeah, they were fun because they could just, you know, they pop out, they have toxin sacks, they're fearless, and they really just mess with your opponent because they tarp at anything and they can actually hit hit back and hurt your your opponent. But now it's it's not true anymore. You know the the weapon the uh, toxin sacs or adrenal glands you give to your turbogon no longer benefit the gaunts. And then once you spawn gaunts now they just stop. They can't do anything after you spawn them. So they kind of just get in your way. You know they become a blocker unit, but they don't do much. They can fire their weapons, but uh, they can't assault. So, in my opinion, they kind of over-nerfed the Turbagons. Especially weird, seeing as they had a Turbagon kit. And the, the Tyranifex isn't a bad model either. And I'm going to make a Tyranifex, I think. I'm definitely going to make a Tyranifex in February, hopefully. That's going to be the month where I put together Tyranifex. But uh, the Tyranifex Turbagon kit, and if they kept Turbagons really solid, they could keep selling those kits, and that would make a lot of money. I just, it was a weird decision. Usually GW tends to, you know, GW, it's, it's not uncommon for a really good model to be really expensive in, for, in uh, Games Workshop. You know, it's a good model. Expensive models tend to be good models on the battlefield, because otherwise, few people would buy the models. There's no reason to. So, I 
was a bit surprised by that. I really was. So it's going to be an exciting weekend. Necron Codex, hopefully I get it on Friday. Super Bowl Sunday, February. February's going to be a good month. My birthday's in February. I'm going to be... Am I going to be in Vegas? I think I might be in Vegas. Yeah. I'm gonna, I, just, I think I should vlog my weekend, my, my time in Vegas. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be kind of fun. And uh, maybe I'll go meet Penn and Teller. Go to a Penn and Teller show. That'd be kind of, that'd be a good time. Mm hmm Instead of the Vegas Open, I'm more excited for uh, Vegas. It'll be nice to have a vacation with my wife. We haven't gone anywhere and done something in a while, so it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good time to just relax together, and uh, it'll be fun. To time, you know, it's always fun to spend time with your loved ones, and uh, that'll be good. And then Adepticon is like three weeks later. I don't know what else I have to be painted up. I'm not doing any tournaments at Adepticon anymore. I, as I said, I backed out of my... Um, I backed out of my Masters tournament because I looked at the requirements and I just didn't have the models and I don't really have the time. I'm in my Tyranid painting challenge and I'd have to buy a lot of models to get... buy and paint for... for a Masters level. So I just said no. You know, and it would just be me getting my butt handed to me for 10 hours. So I'm going to go and catch up with Owen and see how he's doing. And uh, he'll be doing a Masters. I think he's doing a bunch of tournaments. So, because he's, you know, he, he's, he knows War Machine a lot more than I do. Or at least the competitive scene of War Machine. He knows a lot more than I do. I know a bit of a War Machine. I'm just not into the competitive scene. Which is a lot. I know that's basically War Machine. You know. <laughs> That'd be good. I do have some points of War Machine. I'm going to bring some Signar up and some Scorn. Another thing that's happening in the world of, of War Machine Hordes is that Privateer Press has decided to do army bundles, kind of like the um, kind of like the battle forces of because basically the the days of of battle forces are kind of gone for 40k. It's now mega forces essentially, like twice the price, twice the models. That's the only thing GW's been doing lately with these bundles. They seem to be good prices, and usually get some models for free, and most of the time they're actually decent boxes like i love the gray knights box that's a, a if you're starting gray knights get that box um it's a great starter set for gray knights for sure um except for war machine horde since it's a skirmish game these box sets you i don't know how many points there but i'm i'm thinking they're essentially a tournament army you could pretty much take these box sets and go into a tournament with them and plus they seem to be really nice combinations of models I know Signar pretty well, and I've seen the Signar one, and it's actually a pretty solid um, box for your money. It's a great price. It saves you a lot of money. It saves like $50, $60 on models, maybe more. And it's a solid set of models that you would see in a tournament scene. Like, I, I would totally see a list similar to the Signar one in a tournament. So, it's just been, you know, it's a great buy if you're starting War Machine or Hordes. Um, it's a great way, place to start, and they're starting to come out, I think, this month or next month. I think February is when the first ones come out. And the Scorn one looks solid. I actually might pick up the Scorn one because I, I have all, I don't, I basically need all the models, except for Moloch Karn. I, I have Mo, already Moloch Karn. Moloch Karn's in there. So maybe I'll just sell off Moloch Karn or something. 
paint them and put them on eBay or. But uh, he's a, yeah, it's a solid. It's a really solid um, buy if you're new to War Machine or Hordes. I think that's a great idea. For good price. So, they're making some good decisions. Uh, oh, also, I saw the teaser. Everyone go check out the teaser. There's a teaser video now on... It seems like there's going to be a, um, a Codex release and a Codex reveal on the same day. Uh, this Saturday. Because the teaser trailer is out for... I'm guessing it's Harlequins. I'm pretty sure you see a Harlequin in it. So this whatever's going on with Harlequins is going to happen. It's going to be released on. It's going to be announced on Saturday. So I'm guessing it will be released the following week. That'll be kind of cool. So maybe you'll get two Codex reviews in two weeks. Harlequins. I don't. I don't know what they're going to do with them. Making an army of Harlequins is a little weird to me. Fluff-wise, it makes sense, but game-wise, they're kind of one of the most useless models in Eldar. Because they're a glass hammer close combat squad, and those are usually the weakest in 7th edition. Because it's really hard to get those guys into combat with your opponent. You know, they're, you, Eldar are really good at shooting and maneuvering. There are some good close combat models, too. Wraith Blades, for example, are quite good. Wraith Knights. Anything Wraith is essentially really good and close combat oriented, but... They have also survivability, where Harlequins really don't. Same with Banshees. So, making an army out of all them doesn't seem like... Uh, I don't know. I'm curious. I'll, we'll see what happens with them. Maybe it'll be an interesting codex. Maybe it'll just be a supplement. Probably be a supplement, is my guess. But maybe it's a codex in, into, unto itself. And maybe they'll do something that helps prevent them. You know, maybe they get an invulnerable save, or a stealth, or shrouded would be better obviously, um, and give them some survivability to get to their opponent and kill them in close combat. I'm going to stop soon. I'm kind of losing my voice today. And, uh, it's been going on. Yeah, we've been painting for about an hour. So it's good. But look how much I got done. I finished my Hive Tyrant. I just got to base him. So now I have a Flyer and painted up in January. You know, that's another several hundred points. A couple hundred points painted today. This month, so that's good. These guys are looking good, and they're going to come in and kill things. And, and yay. Good stuff there. And I don't know what I'm going to do for High February. But, uh... There's gonna be some fun stuff ahead. I got I can definitely see a few more monsters creatures. Maybe an exocrine, not an exocrine, a toxicrine, a drop pod, harpy, maybe another giant monsters creature. We'll see. So that's it. So that concludes this week's painting with Jay. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got stuff done. Please leave comments in the comment section down below about what you think. Anything else you want to add to the conversation? Who are you cheering for in the Super Bowl? That's my big question to you. Who are you going for for the Super Bowl? New England Patriots? Seahawks? Don't care. Watching for the commercials. All valid reasons. And I hope you got stuff done too. And I hope your January painting challenge was just as successful as mine. He's ready to go on the battlefield. And he's looking pretty sweet. Um, I painted 2,000 points of, of Games Workshop products this month. So I think it's pretty successful. I think it's a pretty good month. Yeah, I hope February is just as good. So I wish you all had a. I hope you all had a very good January. I hope February is going to be good for you too. And we'll see you next week when it is February. Uh, in the next painting with Jay. So until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with Jay.